Good Morning Magic. I'm Gavin Verhey from Wizards of the Coast. And today I am so excited to share some brand new news about the Popper format. What is it? Let's check it out. Around 15 years ago, I discovered Popper on Magic Online, all the way back when it was just a player run format. A format where only commons were legal, I fell in love with the constraints and unique cards that could see play in this format and nowhere else. The format has come a long way since then. For one, I can no longer cast Empty the Warrens, which is for the better. But it's also grown a lot, thanks to both events on Magic Online and massive support from the community. Today, I want to announce something that's pretty big for Popper, should help the format's health, and ties right into that community. But first, a bit of backstory. Whenever a new set comes out, I love watching people pour over the commons to see which ones might have a shot at Popper. With ancillary sets like Commander Legends and Modern Horizons 2 consistently being released in addition to our standard sets, that increases the number of cards each year that enter into the popper format. And while it's exciting to get sets like those, which have commons of a different power level than usual, it also increases the chance that they're going to see play in popper, and sometimes in pretty big ways. We've seen this play out right in front of us, with cards like Fall From Favor and Shatterstorm completely defining the format. Both of those cards ended up banned, but it took a while. Why did it take so long? I want to be transparent with you about the challenges here. Banning a card takes a lot of discussion, format knowledge, and analysis. And Popper, while beloved, is still a lot smaller in player size than something like Standard or Modern, and both those take a lot of time. Additionally, while our competitive play design team knows most competitive formats pretty well, Popper is a format that very few people at Wizards have expertise on. So we have found ourselves in a position where the people who normally ban cards aren't the ones who have the time and expertise to craft Popper in the way that Popper players would really appreciate. Unique challenges sometimes need unique solutions. And so Aaron Forsyth and I spearheaded an effort to come up with a solve for this tricky problem. And today, I'm very excited to announce to you the Popper Format Panel, or PFP for short. Popper has always had an incredible community. The PFP takes that and puts those expert community members as a driving force behind the format. The Popper Format Panel consists of seven people, myself and six notable Popper community members. We're going to be constantly discussing the format and providing recommendations to the play design team. This eliminates a lot of the challenges we've had previously and will cause action such as bannings to take place quicker. Now, you might hear this and immediately think of two other similar bodies for a different format. The Commander Rules Committee, who makes all ban and format decisions for Commander, and the Commander Advisory Group, who helps inform and discuss matters with the Rules Committee. That's a natural comparison. However, I want to clarify that this is not quite the same as those groups. It sits somewhere between them. If the Commander Rules Committee is a 10 on the scale of final decision making, in that they are the final arbiters of Commander ban decisions, I'd say the PFP will be about an 8. What the PFP will be doing is working together to come up with our recommendations for any banned cards then I will take this to our internal teams at Wizards for further discussion. The majority of the time, I predict that the PFP decisions will be taken wholesale and put into action. Now, who are the people on this panel anyway? Well, Popper is a format played all around the world, both online and offline, and I really wanted to make sure that this panel embodied all of that. So I could just tell you who they are, but I figure it's a lot more fun to have them introduce themselves. Take it away, everybody. Hello, everyone. My name is Alexandre, and I'm a Brazilian content creator. I do live streams, I post videos, and most of the content is about Pauper. 
I also enjoy the competitive aspect of Magic, and I'm always trying to become a better Magic player. Hi, I'm Paige Smith. I'm a popper content creator and competitive player. I've written a number of articles, produced video content, and have numerous performances in various events, like popper challenges on Magic Online, leagues, and the SCG Popper Classic event in 2018. Hi everybody, I'm Heisen, my real name is Mirko and I'm an Italian power player. In the last year I opened a YouTube channel and I'm actually a small content creator focalized on power content. And in my MDG career I won two power geddons here in Italy. Hi, everyone, YouTube. え、Hello Gavin, uh, so I'm Emma Partlow, I am the staff writer for TCG Player and I've been playing Pauper for nearly six years now um, and while I don't stream Pauper or I don't run like a Pauper dedicated website I do talk a lot about the format, I write about it on uh, in my content um, but more importantly, we, I talk about Pauper on the BM Cast, which is a podcast I co-host with my friend Scott Cullen. We both care about the format greatly, so it's a really good platform to talk about the format and, you know, how we feel about it. Um, going further, um, I did take part in the Pauper Premier League, which was like a community-driven event ran like two years ago now, hosted by Cool Stuff Inc. Um, and that was a really cool way to highlight the format. Um, just showing off what you can do, the different kind of cards, the accessibility of it. And it was like, I think it was like eight to ten other people, um, and they're all like well-known Magic players, so it was a really fun thing to do as well. Hi, my name is Alex Tillman. You might know me better as Nerd to the Core from Twitter, and I have been playing Popper for about 18 years, mostly on Magic Online, and I've been writing about the format for different Magic websites for about 16 years at this point. The answer to when I started playing Popper is actually a tricky one. I first picked it up during the Storm days, many years ago, trying out both the Storm and Affinity lists. A while later, I also tried out the Cloud Post metagame, but found it really wasn't my speed. I really got back into the format heavily, though, in 2016 as a way to get back into Magic on a budget over my usual formats like Modern and Legacy, I've been, frankly, I've been hooked ever since. I started to play Pauper like uh, seven years ago. In that period, I was playing Legacy and Modern, and a friend of mine asked me to try this format and you know I'm a control player and he gave me a Ubi teaching, a Dimir teaching, an insane deck, it was long. After that event I searched for uh, another deck and I remember that I found an Azorius Acid deck. That was the first deck that I built with muddled mixture and all the five circle of protection on side. Wow. パウパーを始めたのが2019年の8月ぐらいですね。え、スタンダードで言うと闘争対戦が発売されたあとぐらいになります。興味を持ったのが一番最初のきっかけですね。マジック自体に戻ろうっていう風に思ったのはそこがきっかけです。で、え、フォーマットとかについて調べていた時にたまたまパウパーっていう存在を知って、で、調べていくとエターナルフォー
Uh, I had grown up playing in Friday Night Magics and PTQs in New York City and really missed the competitive scene where I was going to college in central New York. And there was an article on the website, uh, on the main magic website called Into the Ether, which discussed different magic online communities and ways to play. And there was a competitive community featured one called the PDC or Popper Deck Challenge. And I found it and I just found the community, started hanging out in the chat room on Magic Online and fell in love. Uh, found the tournament, played in it, won it with a red deck, and I've been playing Popper. I've been hooked ever since. I entered Pauper fresh up the Cloud of Fairies band, which I believe was about five to six years ago now. Um, and at this time, I was playing a lot of modern. So my history of magic is that I started back in Kansa here in 2014. And in modern, I played a lot of Bogles at this time. So hearing about Pauper and this format that is just essentially commons is kind of grabbed me. I thought it was really interesting. Um, and finding out that there was a Pauper Bogles deck, you know, it seemed easy just to build that considering most of modern Bogles uses a lot of the same commons, right? So with this, I uh, picked up the rest of the cards for the Pauper Bogles deck and built it. Um, I was also quite lucky at this point that my LGS and my local scene were very, very big on Pauper, you know, considering how like the power level of it is, it's a little bit like Legacy Light in some cases, and my local scene has a good Legacy scene, so the two married over quite nicely. Um, when I first played Pauper, I was just taken aback by, you know, how many fun and quirky strategies there are, um, like how many different ways you can play Pauper, and how it also riffs on existing archetypes. So for example, you have Tron. Um, when I f saw Tron in Pauper for the first time, I was thinking like, oh, you know, it's gonna be just like an Ulamox Crusher and that's it, is it like colorless, like the modern variant? And seeing like, you know, these Stonehold dignitaries and the like five color Tron, that just blew my mind at the time because you didn't think it was possible. Um, but yeah, it's just really, really cool just to come from like modern into Pauper and just seeing these different approaches. And I've been hooked ever since. My first contact to Pauper, it was on a local game store. And I saw this tournament happening with a little more than half a dozen people. And they were all having a really good time competing and interacting with each other. And I remember feeling really good just by being there. And the cool thing is that most of those people that, that were playing back on the, the, my first contact to Pauper, they still play the format. And nowadays, every time I see them and get to play with them, I feel this same good feeling as the first time we met each other. I like Pauper's deck. I'll show you this one. This is the Shirokuro Pest. I'm going to kill the creatures in a ギルトパクトの主要者が駆け抜けるそして倒すっていうようなデッキになっておりますこの勝ち方がすごい魅力的だなと思ったんでパウパーを始める際いろんなデッキと悩んだんですけどもこれを一番最初に作りましたこのギ
Um, there's just something about ephemerating a mold drifter that just never ever gets old. It's just a guaranteed good time. Um, also, I, I'm quite a fan of the like the Boris aggressive style decks um, or any deck that runs Fraven and Spectre because that is one of my favorite Magic the Gathering cards. My favorite deck from Pauper is Affinity. And I think the reason why is because I love strategies with big and efficient creatures that can also play some removal and some counter magic. You can't tell by the artwork behind me here. My favorite Pauper deck is Elves. Had an affinity for them since all the way back in the days of Onslaught Block playing Tribal Wars on Magic Online, and playing them here really takes me back to those days quite a bit, which I love. There's a lot to do with it, many ways to win, lots of comboing off. I really like Pauper because it's a format without broken cards, and every game is a war of micro value, or that's what I like to think. Don't start to foil your Pauper deck. Managgia le foil. It's not like standard where you have this rotation every year, or, you know, it's the limitation on like, the border that you get in modern. Um, but it's just through rarity instead and I just think that's really really interesting and given like how many commons there are there's so many different decks you can build and anyone can just jump into it if they want to um, and with these deck building limitations you can get super creative with what you build and also you know some some commons are some of the most powerful magic cards in the air ever so it's cool just to have this sort of overlap in import. So there are a couple of reasons I really like Popper. I fell into it for all the reasons anyone falls into magic, the deck building, the discovery, the ability to try things that someone else maybe hasn't tried before. And what's really kept me engaged is there's this really amazing community that exists out there playing this format, trying to find edges. It really speaks to that competitive element that I was searching for all those years ago. The reason why I like Popper so much is simple. I like to play the game and compete. What I love about Popper is it presents a format with a low barrier to entry for players to access, while simultaneously having a rich amount of gameplay within it. There's tons that you could do, and I think players who haven't played it may be surprised at the number of powerful things that you can do in it, a format made entirely out of commons. Things like, you know, Tron is playable here, Delver. They're different from like the typical modern and legacy kind of decks that you would normally see, but they're still awesome in their own right, and there's tons of great things that you can do. Don't underestimate the power of commons. え、ポイパーを好きな理由なんですけれども、え、カードのデザインとはちょっと違う話になってしまうんですけれども、え、普段から動画を一緒に撮ってる、え、加藤で、大西。あと私大会はよくショップに行って、え、みんなで紙で
I keep trying to give back as much as it's given me, and I'm really excited about potentially being able to help steward the format and guide it into another generation so, you know, that next era of Magic players can really enjoy it, really find it, and have that same level of enjoyment and engagement that I've had for really almost 20 years. I think the thing that what makes Pauper so good, it's kind of harks back to when you first played Kitchen Table Magic, when you just cobbled something together, it didn't make sense, it didn't like, there was no rhyme or rhythm, you just wanted to play, right? And Pauper takes a similar approach. And I just hope that myself and the panel can just encourage people to get into the game more often. I'm just really excited just to help craft the future of the format with the rest of the panel. With all the great player feedback and this excellent team of Pauper players, I can't wait to see what's in store next for the format. And if you haven't really tried out Popper yet, give it a chance. So, finally, a message. Eh, first, this Popper team, eh, invited you to come. I'm very proud of you, and I'm very disappointed. I'm sorry, I didn't think so. I always think that I'm just a fan of the magic that I enjoy playing. I'm just a fan of the magic that I enjoy playing. まあ、近くなれるポジションになれるっていうこと自体が、えー、想像も本当できてなかったので、まあ、かなり驚いています今でも世界の国々の中の日本の中の、えー、私たちに声をかけていただけたっていうことなので、えー、かなりプレッシャーはあるんですけれども、まあ、パウパーをね、えー、より良いものより楽しめるフォーマットであることにえー、私たちは喜びをおそらく感じると思いますので、まあ、そこをね、えー、気抜かないで活動していって、えー、調整の、まあ、一つの案を出せていけたらなと思っております、まあ、このチーム自体もそうですけれども私たち以外の選ばれた各国の方々もぜひ、えー、皆さん注目していただければと思いますはいという感じで、えー、パウパー MTG の斎藤でございましたまたよろしくお願いしますありがとうございます I'm very happy to be part of this group of experts and to represent Europe. I will do my best to help to craft a better future for this incredible format that is Pauper. Stay tuned for other news, cause there will be. The last one will be in Italian. Ragazzi sono stracontento. Molto bene. Molto bene. What I want to say last is that I'm very happy to be part of this, but I know how serious and hard is our mission. So be sure that we will be trying our best to make the format healthier, and maybe the format will grow so much in the future that it could be a Grand Prix format. Just let me dream, alright? Now that the PFP has been formed, we've just started discussing possible changes to the current popper format as of last week. We know many players have been asking for changes, and while we don't have anything to announce at this time, you can expect to hear more soon. And for even more information on the PFP, you can go check out an article I've written over on dailymtg.com. So what do you think about Papa right now? What should be banned, changed, or even unbanned? Let us know in the comments down below. We'll be reading. I'll talk with you again soon. And in the meantime, may you have a lot of fun with comments. You got this. Here in card slot number one, we've got Well of Lost Dreams right here as well, continuing the panorama. And there's a fibble tip hidden on each one of these cards. Uh, so they make a panorama all together, but there's also a fibble tip uh, here. So, you know, of course, Path to Exile, Staple in Modern, Legacy, Commander, all the